Thank you. Year 2000 was a very memorable year. It was the year that I had my first son. And in his first year of life, I watched him learn so many things. To roll, to crawl, to walk, and to eat by himself. It was fascinating. These experiences made me want to learn more about how, children's, how uh, children develop. So I changed jobs. I moved from teaching sports science to, to high schoolers toward learning more, more about little ones, preschoolers. So I started teaching at Queen Maud University College of Early Childhood Education. And it was here I was introduced to a very cool concept. Nature outdoor preschools. At these preschools, kids spend most of their daily hours outside. In the summer, they're outside for more than six hours every single day. In the Norwegian winter, kids spend at least four hours out outside every day, no matter what the weather snow and ice. I immediately knew that this was something I had to explore. As a father, it was interesting for me because I wanted my child to love nature as I do. But as a researcher, was there more going on here? So my question was, how do nature preschools affect early development in children. To find out, I started visiting nature preschools to see how they work. And to be honest, initially it appeared to be pretty wild. I once was stand waiting outside a, a nature preschool without any fences around the buildings. Six or seven kids were playing outside without any adult supervision. The kids were just free to run away. And I was remember thinking, how can this be safe? Can't they just run away? After visiting preschool, nature preschools in Germany, Sweden, and Denmark, I, start, I began to see a pattern. Children at these schools were given an extraordinary amount of freedom and independence on a daily basis. At the same time, the teachers used special routines to keep the kids safe outdoors. Based on my research and personal experience, I believe that nature preschools are the perfect arena for instilling confidence in children in a safe yet challenging environment. And to me, this is the most interesting values that preschools can teach children. But how is it done? How do they do it? The answer is quite fascinating. Being outdoors in the forest or in nature for most of the day requires well-established routines and organization. Nature preschools have developed a great number of routines to optimize the time spent in nature, both for children and employees. And some of these routines are quite special. Let's walk through some situations during a typical day in a nature preschool. The day starts right after breakfast when the kids can go outside when they have got rest. Alan and Alexander just finished breakfast. And they are the first one outside no, they are in a hurry. A lion is after them. So they have to run. The rocks are in the way. So, th so they climb them and jump down one meter into the high grass. No, they can't see in the buildings or the, the group anymore. They are all alone on their adventure. They are running fast and cross all kinds of water and rocks. All of a sudden, they stop. Not because a giant lion is about to eat them. Not because the teacher just called them. But 
because they almost crossed the invisible border. Alan and, and Alexander are for a moment back in the real world. They look each other in the eyes. No need to speak, they both know it. Do not cross the invisible border. Hurry up, Alan, the lion is right behind you, Alexander shouts. And the two little adventurers are on their way back in the other direction. So what I discovered was that the mess that I first saw actually had a structure. Alan and Alexander met an invisible border in their jungle race that marks the line that their children are, uh, are not allowed to cross. The nature preschools spend a lot of time around the buildings before and after they make trips in the forest. And these borders might be symbolized by a rock, a, uh, a track, a painted mark on a tree or a rope. But these invisible borders are very easy to cross. But the children are taught to respect the borders. Around Haukvatne, nature preschool, these borders are drawn on a map like this. You see the red line that marks the invisible border. But children are not capable of, learn of reading maps. So the invisible border goes here. And as you can see, there is no visible border. So the children need to learn where the borders are. Here, you see the border. It goes from the tree to the anthill. All of the kids are dressed and outside. And the group is gathered to make today's trip. The teachers are given the start signal. It's a skiing competition. And everything is at stake. It's win or lose. Alan is using his unbalanced skating technique. And as long as the terrain is flat, he's ahead of Alexander. And the finish line is on top of the monster hill. And Alexander is using his classic uphill technique. He runs like the wind and crosses the finish line just seconds before Alan. They both fall over and wait for the rest of the group. In this nature preschool, the finish line was actually a designated waiting place. When nature preschools leave their buildings and make trips to nature, they walk along familiar paths. Children can walk or run by themselves along the path until they get to a waiting place, where they must stop and wait for the rest of the group. These places are not marked, but the children know where the places are. While waiting, they can climb trees, play, or just relax. When the whole group has arrived, the group can continue on to the next waiting place. The adults often walk with the slowest one, and as you can see in the back of the group there, the adults are at the start of the monster hill. When the whole group have arrived at the place of the day, it's time for play and learning. Tuna has counted to 20, and now she is coming. The group is playing hide and seek, and Alan, Alexander, and Ola has found a nice hiding spot under the tree. Here she can't find them. Knut is up in the tree, but Kim has forgot that Tuna is seeking and found a nice moustache. In most preschools, teachers never let the children leave their sight. In nature preschools, teachers trust that children respect the invisible borders that I discussed earlier. In addition, teachers use another tool, reference areas. Reference areas are spaces that have been selected as mini nature playgrounds. And to earn this designation, the teachers check for anything that could be dangerous to the children. For example, large march holes or water, 
that the children can fall into, or cliffs they can fall from. Teachers typically have more than five different reference areas in the forest where they can, lead, where they can let their children run wild. Nature preschools have de developed many routines that help the employees restrict the children and to ensure the children do not run away. Examples include uh, the invisible borders, instead of fences around the, the, their buildings, waiting places where the children need to stop and wait for the rest of the group, and invisible borders at different reference areas that restrict the children's playing and movement radius. All of these rules help the adults keep control of the children when they are in nature. Every fall, the teachers present the rules and the children who have experience at this preschool, like Alan and his friends, are told to teach the new children. If a child does not know the, the, the invisible border or the waiting place, the other children are told to help the new child learn. And if the child still does not respect the rules, the other children are taught to contact the, the adults. Then the adults can explain to, ch to children who have broken the rules that they must take away some of their freedom as a sanction. They say, if I cannot trust you, I have to take away some of your freedom. You have to stay with me until I can trust you. Examples of other such mild sanctions are the children need to stay close to the buildings or the gathering place. The children need to walk together with the adults. The children need to stay in sight of the adults. These sanctions are very mild. But if Alan has to stay close to the buildings instead of playing with his friends, it can feel like a prison. All the rules explained here is based on trust. And the trust given to children in nature preschool is essential. And this kind of trust makes the child independent and gives the child good self-confidence. Now, imagine these two little happy boys in a different country, in a different city, in a city without easy access to nature. The children here do not play in nature, but rather on the asphalt playground available to them. I believe that nature is actually not the essential thing here for preschools to plant the seeds on confidence in children. I believe it's the structure of the day and the rules that instill this confidence in young children. Preschools all over the world can adjust to this. It's not rocket science, but it can help children believe they can move mountains. Thank you very much.